We have some other guitar overdubs that are gonna come in later in the song, but then let's get to the vocals. Now, when we cut these vocals, we, when we came in approaching the song, we were really relaxed, and Lemo sang it the first time, sitting on the couch back there. I have this old mic called the Frank Sinatra mic, which is 60s, AKG D24, which is, I think there's a, a few records of Frank Sinatra singing, and he has it in his hand, so they call it the Frank Sinatra mic. But the internals, our Ringo Starr is D19. So they're the same internals that the Beatles would have used all over the Beatles records, except this one kind of has like a 58 style uh, bulb on the top, and it works really good for singing. So Lemo's sitting on the couch behind me. I ran his vocals into the Autoscape 76D and then the Opticomp, and he's just literally sitting back there. He had no headphones. I played what came off these speakers, and probably about seven feet back, he just sang in the mic, and that's our vocal take. Of all the things that we did, this is the case and scenario where you see more plugins because I really had to deal with that. Him just singing back there, we didn't care, but we loved the performance so much. And thanks, thankfully and gratefully, I know how to work around some plugins. And that was one where even though we tracked it with Audioscape, it needed some love later. So here's Lemo's vocals with the song. I want to know you, my supernova The sun is shining but I'm standing on the other side Right where you left me, life is so heavy Sometimes I wonder if I'm heading for the other side So these vocals are being slammed. My little thing to use on that is I use this delay which is kind of like a copy of an analog delay. I love it, and if you notice, I put the output output super high. The wetness is barely up. It's got like a few milliseconds of delay on it. I have an API EQ where I'm pumping some of the upper frequencies. Sometimes I do a lot of low end cuts, but since this is a 60s kind of beetle mic, that was the beauty of them. They already had their little cut and they had their little notch cut out of the vocal, so I didn't have to do a lot of EQing on it. And then I have a I have an LA-2A, which is waves, barely working. And then I got 1176 or a CLA-76. I want to know ya, my supernova. The sun is shining, but I'm standing on the other side, right where you left me. So you can see when he went, you know, you saw the um, plug-in totally slam. Like, well, that's why I used it. I wanted to kind of do what I did initially on the tracking, which was nice, but as I put his vocals super loud, it just enhanced some of those things of having a live mic and a live performance. So I'm using technology to help me out, but also I'm still using the analog sense. When I put it all together, I felt it needed a hair more, and one of my favorite ones is the Decapitator by Sound Toys. Um, I'll let you hear it with it and without it. I want to know ya, my supernova The sun is shining but I'm standing on the other side Right where you left me, life is so heavy You can hear when I put the decapitator in it just add a little bit of top end and kind of thinned out some of the woofiness of it At least that's what it sounds like on my speakers And I really love it, it just really And that's that thing of when people talk about mixing and I could spend all day like throwing up all these EQs and cutting this and doing that. Doesn't really matter, honestly, man. You gotta play the vocals with the track and see of all these little things that you're doing sound good. So here's the track. I put all the whistles and bells on them, a way process more than any of the instruments. And I have to make sure he really sounds cool over the music. I want to know you, my supernova. The sun is shining, but I'm standing on the other side Right where you left me, life is so heavy All right, so one of the cool things I do with vocals is I'll duplicate them three times and I'll slip digitally the two other vocals out of time. I can slip the WAV files, sometimes I print them and I slip the delays back with the same delay I showed you on the room mics. So here's the vocal. And I'm going to play you the main vocal, and then I'll add in the right 
and then I'll add in the left. So instead of using some kind of like stereo uh, delay or some kind of stereo unit, I physically split the vocals, made three vocal tracks, which is fat and huge sounding, and then I've out of time, and I mess around with that until they sound right, and that's slipping the files, whatever I have to do to make them sound cool, to make it sound like an old Bowie record. So here's one vocal, and then I'll go two, and then three, adding in the left and then the right. I want to know ya, my supernova The sun is shining but I'm standing on the other side Right where you left me, life is so heavy Sometimes I wonder if I'm heading for the other side I mean that's massive on my speakers so he's competing with all these drums and all these loud instruments and then it works So now you hear the cacophony and the anarchy and I'm basically, it's like building the pyramids. I have these big blocks of sound. I'm just heavily just throwing them into the mix. And my Pro Tool system has really nothing on it. And that's the thing that I think is a little bit of rarity in these day and ages. If you go and listen to Brendan O'Brien or you listen to, um, um, Nigel, the guy that does all the Radiohead records, they track a lot. I think Ben and O'Brien could probably bring in tapes of Rage or Stone Temple Pilots, throw them on a deck, put everything at zero, hit play, and you're going to hear that radio song good to go. It's a th crazy way to approach it. And when I was growing up, those are the cats that I wanted to be like. So as I start to process my sound using my influence of Steve Albini that he showed me to Dave Sardi. Then we talk um, Nick Lene and uh, Nigel to um, Rich Costi, a uh, mixing, all those people. I love what they do. A lot of the stuff is organic. A lot of the stuff is committal. I think Rich Costi travels around with the BCM 10 console so he can get that Neve sound. I love that.